Now I've already made countless reviews on Enlisted's gold weapons, which you can all find in a playlist up there. But this time the devs have released an absolutely nutty new update to how many gold weapons you can use. And this video will explain why it completely changes the meta of the entire game and what you need to do right now. In this dev vlog, Battle Pass of the first season of 2023, it shows you what the new awesome gold weapons actually are. And I'll have a review on all of these out soon, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. That was actually quite a subtle plug. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Thank you to all these great fans who's turned out. What do you think? But the interesting thing is this. Three over two. They've increased the number limit for gold weapons, which essentially means you can get more of those gold weapons. The rule is that weapons only available in one campaign can be obtained up to three times, whereas weapons available to be bought in two campaigns can be bought twice in each of those two campaigns. Any gold weapons available in three or more campaigns haven't changed, however. To give you some examples though, the Swomi KP26, which I already rated very highly in this video up here, is only available in the Moscow Axis campaign, which therefore means you can can get it three times rather than just once. The M1E5 Garand, which I reviewed in a different video, could be bought in both Normandy and the Pacific for the Allies. Therefore, you can get up to four of these if you buy it twice in each campaign. And then for the new Lanchester Model 1, which is available in three campaigns, Normandy, Tunisia and Pacific for the Allies, is unchanged. You can get one of these from each campaign and no more. But perhaps the most important thing, especially in combination with what we just spoke about, is right at the bottom, starting with this season, weapons from the previous season of the Battle Pass and the season before that will continue to be available for purchase instead of being made unavailable immediately. This therefore means that the outgoing gold weapons that were supposed to be removed right now are staying in the store for a number of weeks. By the time this video comes out though, there will only be 9 days left to get them and it will display exactly how long is left for you to get each weapon in the top right corner of the weapon in the logistics menu, so keep watch of that. This is not much time at all though, so you need to consider right now whether you're going to get them. The ones that are disappearing include the Gewehr 43 chambered for the Kurtz cartridge, the Degtyrev PDM-42, the Schmeisser Mark 36, the M1903 Springfield with Pedersen device, the M2A1 Carbine, the Gewehr 1888, the Swomi KP-26, and the Mighty Burdan 2. Now I've already spoken about many of these in my Gold Weapon Review playlist, and you should watch those videos for more details, but my order of importance is on the screen right now of all the weapons that are about to disappear. The actual first priority for all of you watching this video right now is for you to go and get the Gewehr chambered for the Kurtz cartridge as many times as you can. This thing has an argument to be the best weapon in the entire game. Perhaps it is actually truly the best, and here's why. Firstly, this weapon counts as a rifle class weapon, not an assault weapon, meaning it can go on basically all of your troops that tend to not really have good weapons already, like engineers, radio men, anti-tank gunners, flame troopers, even mortar men can equip it. If that's your fancy. And if it is, uh, I don't know. Honestly, you're a lost cause, mate. Are you with me? But then when we look at the stats, we see it's actually better than the mighty STG-44, one of the best weapons in the entire game and perhaps the best thing we can compare it to. But it may not look like it at first glance. Stay with me. The Gewehr has slightly better damage, better reload time, better recoil, and better shot dispersion, a hidden statistic in the game, all for the same magazine size. Now you're probably looking at its rate of fire and thinking, well, the STGs is miles better, and you'd be right normally. But the Gewehr Kurtz is unique. It's essentially an automatic firing weapon, as you can either click really quickly to fire it on semi-automatic mode, or change it to the very, very unique three-round burst mode, which is actually quicker than the STG's automatic firing mode. It just doesn't really reflect it in the stats, which is, you know, why people get a bit confused. This is literally the cream of the crop, the cherry on the top, the best of the lot if you're looking for a gold weapon. And for this reason, for me, it's a 9.8 out of 10 on my famous gold ranking leaderboard, right in first place. You have to get this weapon, and you need to get as many of them as possible before they disappear from the store altogether, and who knows when they're going to come back. The maximum number you can get is 4, 2 from Normandy and 2 from Berlin, and once it's gone, it's gone. 
you have nine days. You also need to remember though that you can move any gold order weapon to any other campaign that it was originally available to buy in. Keeping on the Gewehr 43 theme, that means you can move any Gewehr 43 Kurtz from the Berlin campaign to the Normandy campaign and vice versa. Do this by unequipping the weapon first on any troop and clicking the transfer button. It will bring you up a list of options of other campaigns to change it to. But just as we said, for the Kurtz here, you can only move it between Normandy and Berlin, so they're the only ones that actually pop up, no matter which side you click first. It's cost some bronze weapon orders to do this too, so think before you move it. You don't want to pointlessly waste your bronze weapon orders. Now upon saying this, you may be tempted to move all of your Gewehr Curses to one campaign for one squad, to make one absolutely monster squad of four Gewehr Kurtz chads. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. But I'd advise against this. Remember how you always complain because your AI died pointlessly over and over again from doing something stupid without you even telling them to do it? It's also a regular occurrence for me on my Twitch streams, where you can find loads more tips and tricks about the game of Enlisted, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Well, if you remember your agony when this happens, then you should be able to connect the dots to realise that whenever you want to use the other soldiers which have your supposed Gewehr Kurtzes equipped, you'll never really get to use them, because 9 out of 10 times, they're already going to be... Dead. He's a knobhead, but he's hilarious. As a result, my recommendation is to actually only put one Gewehr Kurtz on your most important soldier, a non-assaulter and non-machine gunner troop type, like an engineer, each in only one squad. This allows your existing squad to pick up the Kurtz and keep using it if your main guy dies for whatever reason, but also ensures you can continue playing with it all the time on every single squad. Yet perhaps the most important reason is knowing that AI or bots are really, really bad with semi-automatic weapons, and the AI can't change change the firing mode on the weapons that they have equipped. This means they won't fire nearly as quickly as you would if you were holding that weapon, and it just means that they're just significantly less efficient using it. Hence, it's better to save the Kurtz for times when, you know, you can use it, rather than your stupid bots. Now you can ignore this advice if you wish, especially if you're good at hiding your AI so they don't die pointlessly, or if your AI are getting enough kills somehow just without you doing anything. But generally it's hard to do both of these on the maps while you're running around in a chaotic situation, so I would say my advice would make the most sense for most people. Now I've spoken about the Gewehr for a while, but what about the other gold weapons that are disappearing in less than 9 days? Now I've already reviewed the Schmeisser, the Springfield Pedersen device, the Gewehr 1888, and the Badan 2 in this video, so check that out if you want more details. But if you're looking for a quick summary, well, they aren't exactly great weapons. I'm trying to be nice! I told y'all! The Schmeisser is the best of the bunch, but it's not out of this world. But the one I actually would recommend is the Burdan 2. Because after all, it's the one-shot meme <laughs> cannon. It is very fun to use. I know many people that have bought all three Burdan 2s in Moscow Allies as a result, and I don't blame them. So like the dang video if you're one of those dudes who would. <laughs> the Swomi, however, is a world-class weapon. I rated it as a solid 9 out of 10 in its own dedicated video, and I'd still hold it in just as high regard now. Its best feature though is its ridiculously low recoil, but also it looks amazing. I mean, come on, look at that curve. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. For full disclosure, I'm going to get as many of these as I can because I just really like them. And at its maximum, I'll be able to get three of these as they're only available in one campaign. Moscow Axis. The Degtyrev PDM-42 is not one I have reviewed in the past, and it's not amazing, but it is a very viable weapon still, as are all Soviet SMGs in the game anyway. Soviets just have a knack for SMGs, it's literally insane. For context, it's almost as good as the PPS-43, so it's only really worth obtaining for power reasons if you are a low level in the Moscow Allies or Berlin Allies campaigns. But if you're a collector, like me, of unique stuff, then by all means. I'd give it a 5.9 out of 10 on my leaderboard, as it is statistically better than the Schmeisser, which we just spoke about. And as for the last weapon, the M2A1 Carbine, it is indeed a very, very solid assault SMG. It's reminiscent of the M2 Carbine already in game, but as an assault weapon, which is actually very, very useful and unique for an assault weapon. It has a unique firing sound too, which makes it quite cool. And it's better than the Degtyrev PDM we just spoke about statistically. It's only ever so slightly worse than the M1928A1 Thompson with box magazine. Currently 
apparently the best Thompson you can obtain in the Normandy Allies campaign. So obtaining this thing is very worth it all the way up until the late levels. It's on par with the VMP 1926 in statistics wise, which I have also reviewed previously. And honestly, I'd give the M2A1 carbine a 7.8 out of 10. A very, very solid choice if you main Normandy Allies, and great for beginners with its OP fire rate and damage. And of course, as always, there are the new gold soldiers and gold vehicles, as with every new battle pass season. They also have timers marking the periods in which you can get them if they're disappearing soon. And there are some awesome looking new tank and aircraft camos which I've already picked up, mostly for sentimental reasons personally because they don't really do anything that are particularly different to anything else that's already in the game for free but you know what that's going on a tangent I don't need to say that come on. Though and important to mention is that all the new gold order soldiers from the previous battle pass season and the new one finally have the best perk points they can get for their class and number and it's awesome to see the devs actually take feedback from my videos and from you guys in the comments. So linking to that, let me know down below what you think of these new gold order weapon changes. Special thanks goes out to my supporters, including Narfalex and Vendatrex. And now that you've finished learning some tips and tricks from this video, you should go and watch me reacting to the best enlisted memes in this video. Because it's funny, and you need a laugh. I can tell.